Hi guys, it's me again. Okay, so um, yesterday when I read, well, it's today, but it's like chapter 19. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and read chapter 20 because I want to see what's going on. <laughs> chapter 20. Catherine was the first to notice that Jonah wasn't keeping up, that he wasn't pedaling hysterically towards home alongside her and Chip. Jonah, she called over her shoulder for several bike lengths ahead. What are you doing? I have to go back, he yelled. We can't just leave Angela like that. But she's a grown-up. She told us to go. This was Chip arguing now. She and Jonah decided he didn't have time to stand there and argue. He whirled around and began pedaling back toward the library just as desperately as he pedaled away from it. Grown-ups can get kidnapped too, he thought, and she's a little nutty. She'd probably trust anyone who pretended to believe her crazy theories. Her theories are just craziness, aren't they? Jonah couldn't think about that right now. He focused on trying to pedal faster. By the time he reached the library, his legs were aching and he was gasping for air. He dropped his bike on the sidewalk and slipped into the door just ahead of a mother pushing a baby in a stroller and holding the toddler's hand and taking infuriating slow steps with a play-by-play -play commentary. That's right. You push the button for the automatic door opener and then the door will open. And Jonah dashed through the lobby past the checkout desk. Young man, no running in the library. It was a librarian, one of the women his mom always said hello to when she stopped in. Jonah thought maybe this librarian had been in charge of story hour when he, he and Catherine were little preschoolers. I just, in the conference room, men fighting, danger, that was all Jonah could manage with his lungs threatening to burst. To her credit, the librarian stopped yelling and sprang into action. Show me, she said. She rushed along behind Jonah, practically running herself. They dashed through the stacks, past the magazine section where Catherine had hidden before, past the nonfiction shelves with all the thick books about taxes. Then finally, Jonah could see the conference room, and it was empty. Angela? Jonah called. He pushed his way into the conference room. Not only was the room empty, but all the chairs were lined up perfectly around the table, and the table was exactly centered in the room as if nothing had been knocked off, kilter by struggling men. The window was closed. The only sign that anything had happened here was a smudge on the glass wall, probably Jonah's own fingerprints, smeared against the glass when he'd scrambled out of the window. Just what do you think was going on in here? The librarian asked. She had her eyebrows raised doubtfully. Just then, Jonah saw a movement out of the corner of his eye. He turned his head to peer out of the window and there was Angela. She was walking briskly through the far end of the parking lot. That's the woman, Jonah exclaimed, the one that was in danger. While Jonah was watching, Angela stepped into the cluster of pine trees on the other side of the parking lot. She turned and lifted her hand in a wave that might have been a wave at Jonah. And then she vanished. Jonah hadn't known that it would look like that. He'd heard Catherine's description of janitor appearing and disappearing. He'd heard Angela's description of the plane doing the same thing, but he hadn't understood how strange it would be how it would set every nerve in his body on edge and make him question all sorts of basic tenets about how the world worked. Could gravity be tampered with too? Could time? Jonah blinked and stared and stammered, but, but, and then at least he had some sense to shut his mouth because the librarian was looking at him oddly. Already his brain was trying to supply explanations for him. She just stepped behind a tree. You just blinked and you thought you saw something odd. The same kind of explanations he tried to use to account for Catherine's story for Angela's. The kind of explanation anyone else casually glancing out a window would have accepted without a second thought. But his glance hadn't been casual. He knew he hadn't blinked. Not while Angela was disappearing. He understood now what Angela had meant when she said, I know what I saw. I trust my own eyes. The scene had been clear and distinct. And he really hadn't seen Angela vanish into thin air. Where is this woman? The librarian asked. I don't quite see. Well, she's gone. The librarian narrowed her eyes at him and tilted her head suspiciously. So, what was this? She asked. A dare? Your audition for drama club? If so, I heartily recommend you for whatever part you're trying to play for because you really had me convinced. You had me running through the library. I wasn't lying, Jonah protested. There really was two men in here fighting and they seemed dangerous and... The librarian tapped her chin, her eyes narrowing further. How did you see what was going on in the conference room before you ran in the front door, she asked. Um, through the glass from outside, Jonah said, which did you have a grain of truth to it? Didn't, which did have a grain of truth to it. 
deal. His words came out sounding like a question. Someone did mention that they thought they heard a girl scream back here, but we thought it was just one of those computer games. The librarian seemed to be talking mostly to herself. She reached out, grabbed Jonah's arm. Come with me. We'll do a search through the library, and you tell me if you see either of those men. Meekly, Jonah let, let himself be led back through the magazine section, past the row of computers, past the reference desk, through the little kid section where the mother and the toddler was asking with exaggerated patience, what will it be, Curious George or the cat in the hat? In the yaw section, some kids from school were playing on the computers, and they pointed and giggled when they saw Jonah being paraded around, his arm trapped in the librarian's grip. I don't see either of the men now, Jonah said, his face burning with shame. He just wanted to get out of the library, away from the librarian. He could see Chip and Catherine standing hesitantly by the front door as if they weren't sure if they needed to come and rescue him or not. The librarian let go of his arm. I think you did see something, she said. You really were looking carefully for those men. And Jonah had been, even when the kids from school had been laughing at him, he'd made sure that he peered down every aisle between the bookshelves, every nook of that little of the little kid reading area. The men were nowhere in sight. Oh well, Jonah said, trying very hard to keep his voice from shaking. Nothing's wrong now. Can I just go? The librarian regarded him thoughtfully. Go on then, she said. Jonah could feel her eyes on him as he went to join Chip and Catherine. Walking out the door, he felt robotic. Because his body was doing something so normal, one foot stepping in front of the other, hands held out to shove the, against the door, while his mind was zipping and zooming and alighting on one strange thought after the other. What happened? Catherine asked. Is Angela okay? Angela? Jonah had to struggle so hard to focus his mind to concentrate on the one precise moment of the memory that his brain kept trying to transform into something normal and acceptable, something that would fit with everything else he already knew about the world. He wouldn't let his brain do this. He wouldn't stop trusting his own eyes. I saw Angela, Jonah said. I don't know if she's okay or not. I think she went into a time warp. Ooh, a time warp. Ooh, so do you believe in time warping? Hmm? That would be neat. Okay, 21 tomorrow. I won't read ahead, I promise. I'll wait on you.